Hey everybody, this is Steph with KillerSites.com. In this video, I'm going to talk about developing your web developer or your web designer skills in 2016, 2017. What do you need today in this time to become a web developer? Now, I specify that in this time because over the years, this has changed. A web developer in 2016 and 2017 is different from a web developer in 2010, even in 2014, you could say. Things continuously change and evolve. And so if you're getting into web design and development for the first time or you're a beginner, this is a type of thing that you're probably interested in learning about. So what do you need to learn in 2016 and 17? In terms of web development, the basics are always, uh, well, not just web development, in any field of study, anything that you do, technology or otherwise, it's very important that you concentrate on the basics, always the basics, always the basics, because the complex stuff is just basic concepts layered on top of each other, kind of like a hamburger, right? That's all it is. So it's all about layering of the basic ingredients of an app, whether it be a web app really, or an iOS app or whatnot. So you always wanna concentrate on your basic uh, techniques, your basic uh, subjects, if you will, in a, particular, uh, in a particular field of study. So I've gone off on a tangent, I'm sorry, when we get back. So with web development, that means you should learn HTML, and that includes HTML5, of course. The current version of HTML is HTML5. So it's HTML5, CSS3, and that's just, you know, that's HTML and CSS, then JavaScript. These are the three key languages that you gotta learn in terms of uh, web design, web development, for sure. You gotta know these very well. Now, it doesn't mean you have to master every single aspect of the languages, that's impossible. Uh, well, it's, prob it, it's possible, but it's a waste of time. All you need to do is learn the key principles and techniques understand the key aspects of each of these languages. Once you've got that, then when you're working on projects and so forth, you can always refer back to uh, Google and search out whatever specific things you may not know exactly off the top of your head. And by the way, that's how it is in development. You're gonna forget a lot of things over time as you become more and more advanced. That's just normal. Stuff that I used to know like the back of my hand 10 years ago, I don't remember. Of course, it would take me an hour to get back into it and it would come back to me, I'm sure. But nonetheless, you can't expect to know every single thing because when you look at all the things you have to learn in the web development world, for instance, you know, HTML, CSS, JavaScript are, are the beginning, they're the foundation of three languages. It could be very daunting because then on top of that, you're gonna, have to, you're gonna have to add SQL in databases. SQL is the language of databases. And then Although that's not too hard to learn. And then you're going to have to learn how to design proper databases and so on. Then you have to learn a server-side programming language. Now, server-side language is a language that operates on the server. So which language should you learn? There's a lot of competitors. Unlike HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, where there's no competitors, everybody learns these. When it comes to server-side languages, there are competitors. Uh, big ones are uh, PHP, the most widely used server-side language in the world today. This is the language behind Facebook. This is the language behind WordPress, Drupal, Joomla, and many, many other sites. In fact, in terms of server-side programming languages, those are basically, uh, that's the code basically that is sitting on the server. And don't worry if any of this is confusing to you, any decent beginner's HTML course will teach you these things. Um, yeah. So uh, PHP is the most popular server-side language in the world today, and it's not going anywhere. It's maintaining that. Uh, you have several others, though, that compete with PHP. You have C-sharp.net. You have uh, Python, to a lesser extent, although typically Python and PHP are used to, to, are used to do two different things. Although they can, they can, you know, a lot of these languages can do whatever the other languages can do, can do, but each language has its pros and its cons, and each language can do something very well. Anyway, so you got a PHP, C Sharp, .NET, you got Java, of course, that was my old fav favorite back in the day. Um, you have Ruby, of course, 
and there's, there's, there's several others actually, but the big ones these days are PHP, Java, c .net, Ruby to a certain extent, although I think that's fading slowly. And what's rising now is JavaScript on the server with projects like Node.js and Express.js. Um, there's a lot of interest there. That's rising quickly because traditionally JavaScript programming was solely inside of the web browser. When you would write your JavaScript code, that code would operate in web browsers. Whereas now they've taken JavaScript and put it onto the server and that's attractive to people that you have one language for both the web browser and the server. Although advanced programmers will tell you that's kind of like, yeah, it's not such a huge issue because the details about the language itself in terms of the code is, is not the hard part. The hard part about coding is understanding good coding structures and understanding uh, how to properly build apps and, and structure apps and how to write code properly. And those principles, those techniques, if you will, uh, they're language agnostic, meaning it doesn't matter whether it's Java, Ruby, PHP, JavaScript, uh, Python, if you write good code, you write good code. That's why I rather have an advanced PHP guy who knows his stuff really well. Uh, I rather bring him into a Python project than a beginner in Python or a guy who's just done a, a year or two of Python because the advanced PHP guy within just a couple of weeks will become an advanced Python coder because he's an, an advanced coder. It's like being a race car driver. Whether you can drive really well in a Porsche uh, or a Ferrari or BMW, it matters not. You're a great driver. So if you're an amazing driver, always wins driving Porsches, if, you, if I put you behind the wheel of a BMW with a little bit of adjustment, you're gonna do really well there as well. Uh, I hope that makes sense. Anyway, that's it for 2017. It's all about the core, in terms of web development, it's about the core languages of uh, web development, as usual, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Uh, in terms of server side, I would lean for most people to PHP, not because that language is necessarily the best language technically, but because there's a lot, a lot of business reasons why I still think PHP is superior. Then of course there's SQL. And then on top of that, there's something called frameworks or libraries. Uh, there's many out there and people go, oh, what do I learn? There's so much to learn, oh my God. There's so much to learn, it's getting a little bit silly now. I've seen this before in the Java world. So in terms of uh, frameworks you should learn after you learn the core languages is uh, jQuery, number one. Again, you don't have to be an expert, just understand what it can do, understand the basics, and uh, it's, you know, understand what it's generally used for. So you, you have that tool in your toolbox. And then the next one I would learn is Bootstrap. Bootstrap is a CSS uh, framework that is very popular. So that's one I would learn as well. And uh, that's pretty much it. You may have just heard my phone uh, give me a warning with the power's running out. So that's the end of this video. I hope you make good use of it.